Welcome to this episode of Now That's Something Good, the podcast where we explore the extraordinary in the everyday ordinary. Now here's your host, Sarah Good. Hey, welcome back to Now That's Something Good. We are really excited you are joining with us. We have such a special and fun story today. We talk with our friends, Chelsea and Levi Thomas, and they have quite the story of adventure, of loss, of laying it all out on the line and seeing what happens and just having to wait and pray and hope that maybe it's all going to come together. I'm not going to spoil it all for you. I want you to hear from them, but I think it's really going to encourage you big today. Hey, I want to encourage you in something before we jump into my conversation. If you haven't yet, would you take a moment to go subscribe to the podcast wherever you listen? And would you also take a moment to review the podcast? It only takes a few seconds, but it may makes a world of difference to us. It allows our podcast to be seen um, so other people can find the stories. Again, it's not about Will and I getting all this credit for the podcast. It's not why we do it. We do it because we want stories to be shared and heard and to share a little something good with everyone. So if you would be so kind to do us something good and go share a review and post and subscribe and maybe even share this episode if it's a blessing to you, that would be a big blessing to us. Now, let's jump into my conversation with Chelsea and Levi Thomas. Hey friends, welcome back to the show. Today in the studio, I have my friends Chelsea and Levi Thomas. Um, Why don't you guys say hello and both of you kind of just introduce yourselves a little bit so they can hear your voices and get to know you. Yeah. Hi guys, I'm Chelsea Thomas. Um, I'm from Southern Illinois, so I'm a Midwest girl. Um, Levi is not. Levi's from Oregon. We'll share a little bit about our story there, but we are fairly new to Missouri, um, and of course, getting to know Sarah within yeah. the last year. So, um, we're excited to be here. Yeah, we're gonna dive right in on that. Um, I'm excited. Yeah. What, what, what part of the story? Tell us who what you part are, of the though. story do we need? <laughs> um, yeah, I'm Levi Thomas, and uh, originally from Oregon, okay. and I now live. In the beautiful city of St. Louis, because of uh, this beautiful lady sitting next to me, uh, brought me out here. But no, we love it. And um, yeah, just uh, born and raised on 1,700 acres. And oh uh, yeah, a little bit of a transition coming out here. Um, but yeah. I love it. Like well, I said, I, we'll probably dive into all that. No, I've already got so many questions. So let's just start 1,700 acres. Is that a farm or like just land are you a farm boy we we call it a ranch okay ranch okay yeah see i need the right terms okay but it doesn't but, look like a rancher <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. wait i'm gonna need let's levi let's just start with you so you grew up on a ranch yeah i'm assuming hor- cows hor- i don't what what kind of ranch yeah we had cattle and okay. sheep and then we also of course had horses and all that nice okay so like are you a ho- like can you ride horses and yeah yeah pant Chelsea, this is a Don't let his haircut fool you. Don't let yeah. his hillbilly. <laughs> yeah. I love it. Like, normally you have, like, the cowboy hat or, like, the yeah. rancher mm-hmm. hats, all this stuff. Okay, that's cool. So is that, like, a family-owned ranch, or how did... How's all that? Yeah, happen? my granddad started with nothing. 1964 started buying pieces of land, and uh, wow. when he finished, it was 1,700 acres. Yeah, and now my mom and dad run it. I mean, they both have full-time jobs outside of that, too, but wow. it's kind of... Most uh, ranchers in, well, I mean, I guess in the Midwest, you get the big, bigger farmers, but a lot of ranchers do it more. It's more of a lifestyle. Okay. They're, they're definitely not getting rich. Um, it's about living out in the country and doing what you love, yeah. you know, old, old fashioned hard work. I love it. That I would have so many questions just to ask about mm-hmm. ranch life. We always, man, could take a ranch tour. We might have to come visit you out on the, on the ranch. That's fun. Okay. Well, so then how did you guys meet? How did you get connected? How did your paths intersect? I feel like that's what you guys were laughing about. That's the, story, the so. main question everyone always says, obviously <laughs> being far away. And then Levi always jokes and says, we met on farmersonly.com and everyone believes it because I'm from a small farm town Okay. in Illinois. My hometown's 2000 people. That's so crazy. You wouldn't know that you're in it unless you know you're in it, it like exactly. driving through it <laughs> so anyway we um met through mutual friends and in a company that we were previously involved with which is a big part of our story in general health okay. and wellness company but we both used to be high school teachers and coaches what? okay so we had a very similar just life story background everything yeah. and so some friends that I was teaching with 
wanted to take a trip out to Portland, Oregon, which is where he was living at the time. Okay. And so we had that planned. Um, I flew out there for that trip, ironically enough. Call it ironic, whatever you want to call it, God's <laughs> yeah, plan. But yeah. um, I was dating a guy for six years. He was with a girl for four years. And about two weeks prior to that trip, we had both ended those relationships. Wow. Not knowing. Yeah. And so I flew out there for that trip. We met up for the first time, and we both knew immediately, like, this was something. Yeah. So anyway, so that's how we met. I flew back home. That was the beginning of May 2017. Okay. Finished the school year. The very next day, I bought a one-way ticket out to Portland, and we spent about a week together and just knew, like, that was it. So I flew back home, left my teaching job, my coaching job, told my parents that I was packing my bags and moving to Oregon for a guy that they had never met before. How how did that go? Surprisingly, like they were very supportive and like they could tell like, okay, this is different because that's, I'm a very type A kind of gal and had my everything. And the fact that I was willing to just go, they were like, okay, this must be something. So then I moved in June of 2017 and we got engaged that November. Let's see if she gets the dates right here. Okay. Yeah. yeah. No, we got good. engaged that November. We got married the following March right after. Okay. And then we moved here to Missouri when I was 34 weeks pregnant with our daughter. And we've been here since then. So it's been a... You guys just have a fast track yeah. little thing going on here. This is nuts. Okay. See? I didn't know that. So to back up just a second for you guys listening, Chelsea and Levi, we know each other. We have mutual friends, but we also go to the same church. And so got connected with them. And so this is fun for me because I really don't know their story. So I'm getting to learn it along with everybody, all of y'all listening. So this is great. Okay. So Oregon, you left everything. I mean, Chelsea, just talk a little bit more about that. How was that really? I mean, how old were you at that time? Like leaving everything you've known? Yeah. Going across the country. So I was, well, how old would I have been? 24. 24, I was. Yeah, 24, because okay. I was just a couple years out of um, college and I was yeah. teaching. Um, so then I moved out there. But uh, like I said, we, the company that we were involved with, we both had built online businesses separately as like a okay. side hustle, which is how we had the mutual friends, how we met. Wow. But that freedom... I, let me move out there and leave that teaching job behind. Yeah. And Levi was already doing that full time. Like he had walked away from teaching. So whenever I moved out there, we kind of went all in on the health and wellness side of our lives, Yeah, which now we have a gym and that's a piece of the story that led to it. Um, so when I moved out there, we, that for us was like a stepping stone into, okay, we're going to pursue this together. We knew we were going to get married and be together and, um, started walking that path. So that's amazing. Um, so then how did you get out here to St. Louis from Oregon? <laughs> I got pregnant and <laughs> I wanted to be closer to my family. Yep. Okay. So we, I mean, it was kind of a, our whole story, everything we do, we kind of fly by the seat of our pants. It seems like when we feel Love like it. we need to go somewhere and do something, we just go all in and do it. Yeah. Um, yeah. We, we've moved four times in three years. Okay. Wow. So. Wow. That we just moved this summer into a home, and um, we don't plan on moving for a while. Yeah, okay. so <laughs> good. there's been a lot happening. Good. Yeah. yeah, but we moved when I was 34 weeks pregnant. Levi drove the U-Haul 2,000 miles. I flew, <laughs> and um, that's awesome. Yeah, so then we we moved here, and we actually started to pursue opening our gym okay, when yeah. we were in Oregon. That's kind of that started the process. And then we moved, and whenever we got here, we, for some reason, we just felt like the Chesterfield area was where we needed to be. Yeah. And the way that that all unfolded was a God thing in itself. Um, But yeah, we started pursuing that shortly after I had Macy, and then the next year that fall is whenever we opened, so... It's crazy. I love how stories just all kind of connect and work together. What were both of your... Were you in, like... What kind of teachers were you? High, you say high school mm-hmm. teachers? Well, yeah, I was health and PE. Okay, okay. And then I coached, yeah. Yeah, he so coached wrestling, and then I was, no, I was not. I taught history. Really? Yeah, and then okay. I coached CrossFit and basketball. That's awesome. Okay, and left all that, jumped head into business stuff. So came here, now you're business owners. Mm-hmm. Do you want to talk a little bit about that story, or where do you... Yeah, well, sure. you, do you want to share the piece in between... 
Yeah, tell about losing which piece. The big oh. one, the big. Bomb. Well, there's been several yeah, different. Well, we've had a lot of. We've had a few. We want to hear whatever story you want to share with we us. We joke. <laughs> we joke and we say, "Well, the first six months of six months of our relationship was great, and then after that, we've just been taking gut punches and oh gosh, okay, everything since then." So yeah. We'll talk about, so yeah, you guys were both, both with, and you don't have to share the company, but with a big company, I'm assuming this is, mm-hmm. okay. Yeah. So, well, the whole, the whole journey of opening the gym, um, and I'm not sure if we're supposed to say names and all that, if it you matters. You can do so, whatever. Yeah. yeah. So, and uh, so opening an F45 for us, yeah. um, there's been plenty of opportunities for us to release control Hmm. and talk about pray and realize that God is in control. Yeah. And then if you're trying to control everything along the way, you will go crazy. Mm -hmm. Um, It just adds even more stress to your relationship, to everything else. And so there's been plenty of things like a lot of things in life, you turn around, look back and you realize, oh, that's why that didn't happen. And oh, that's why that didn't happen. And so that started even in Portland. We actually started pursuing it in Portland we're about ready to sign on the dotted line uh, to open it there okay. in a suburb of Portland. And every it, stuff fell through. And so we put everything on hold and it was just didn't feel right. So again, you know, talked about that. Listen, you know, we really want to do this. Yeah. And doesn't feel right. Things are falling through here. Things aren't matching up. So we put on hold. We move out here, get settled. And then that next spring, we start the process again. But, you know, open for three months. Then COVID hits. Yeah. Yeah. Close. We had to, in, in, you know, in our county, we had to close for three months. Still got to pay all your bills, but they won't let you open your business for three months straight. And just that whole walking through that whole first year of COVID yeah. and mass mandates and this and that. And yeah. you just put every dollar that you've ever saved in your life yeah. and borrowed some on top of that into opening a, a new business that, you know, is you feel like you're being tied down the whole time. Like you can't really get up and just run and do what you want. Yeah. And so through that whole process, there's many times where it's just like, you know, and praying and saying that God's in control. It's, we don't know how it's going to work out right now. We don't know how we're going to make it, but we yeah. believe if we keep waking up every day, we lean on him, mm-hmm. trust that he's there for us. And some, you know, somehow he's going to make a way. Yeah. And there was just little things here and there along the way that now we look back and then, coming into this year, just the, the windfall or the avalanche of people that came in and just the momentum. It was kind of like, dream too. okay. Yeah. And so it was just like reassuring of yeah. he's, he's there. Yeah. It's, sometimes it's easy to question or wonder if you forgot about mm-hmm. you or why is this, you know, why is this happening to us Absolutely. when all we want to do is make a difference in this life and we want to, you know, make a difference in people's lives. And yeah. we feel like this is one of the ways we're going to do that. And now it's just one obstacle after another, after another. So again, you know, we, where we're at today, you turn around and look back and yeah, was it fun? No. Um, would we change it? No. Yeah. Because it causes you to grow. It, for me especially, increases your faith mm-hmm. um, because you don't really have a choice. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I love that. I want to come back to us. I want to hear more about the gym story too, because I think there's so much in the dream you alluded to, but come back to me for a second because about control and faith. And I feel like you guys do know very clearly, you feel like God has both given you guys probably individually and together as a couple, just a passion and a purpose. Mm-hmm. Um, I think a lot of people struggle with knowing what their passion and purpose is in life. And so I would love for you first, just share with us where, where you guys are at with that, where you feel like what you're kind of calling your purpose, your mission in life is, and then maybe give some encouragement to people struggling. Like, how did you figure that out? (laughs) Like, how do you know? Well, I think especially like a lot of the things, and we'll share more that we've walked through very much equipped us very quickly to just be willing to let go and take things in stride. And my, just even like my background personally of graduating college, I actually had a corporate finance job. I had a finance degree. Okay. I knew I was supposed to be a teacher and coach. And that was my first big leap of faith of like, this is where I'm supposed to go. Had I not left that job and pursued teaching and coaching, mm-hmm. I wouldn't have started my side business, which wouldn't have allowed me to meet Levi, which everything else. Yeah. So like, it's the first big leap of faith. That's really scary mm-hmm. that I know that God used that. And I still reflect on that to prepare me for everything else. I mean, like I've got you and the doors that he opened and like, that just gave me so much confidence to be willing to go and same things with what Levi has walked through. But especially now with when we share more of just like the hits and things that have 
taken, like we've taken in our first three years of marriage, Mm -hmm. um, we're at a place where like, one, we've never been afraid to lay everything on the line. Like we know if God's calling us to do something, we need to go after it. We need to do it. And he's going to work things out. And we're a good team in that I'm the... I don't know what she'd say. I'm the, it's going to work out. We got to do this thing. And Levi is more yeah. of the analytical. Here's how we're going to get there where I kind of fly by the <laughs> great faith I love it. type thing. So yeah. we, we're a very good yeah. balance in that way. But, um, we've been grown so much and I know for a fact, Levi does too, that the reason that we've taken some of the big hits that we have so quickly in such a short time being together is because that is what has prepared mm-hmm. us and equipped us to live a life where We've had it all. We've had a lot, and we've been at rock bottom zero in a very short time and had to rebuild mm. our life to where we're willing to let go of things and yeah. we don't hold on to things the same. And we know that if God's calling us somewhere to do something, we're just going to go ahead and do it and trust that He's going to work things out for us. And yeah. we, if we felt called to go to Florida in a few <laughs> months or do something totally different, we're at a place now where we would be willing to let it all go yeah. and not have that attachment to things or like our identity is truly not tied to mm-hmm. our gym or this business or whatever it is. Like we are, we've been grown very quickly to a place where we're just willing to let go and to step into what's yeah next, which yeah. has been really, it's a free and fun place. To I live. bet. I love that. And I'm sure there's a lot of people listening that that struggle with, you know, I want to do that, but I don't know how to do that. And what does that look like? Can you guys share just a little more maybe of some of the stories that have led you to that place? Because I think you said it's not probably just one moment. It's probably continuing to have to choose to walk like that and continue to choose to trust God, but come back and share any of the story that you you want to. Well, we can both kind of share a little bit about our the company that we were involved yeah. with, this was a big defining I one. Want, you're fine. I was going to say something on, to add what you said earlier, yeah. because we talk about it and obstacles um, in life, business, marriage, everything. Uh, one, we believe it was not an accident that we met each other, that we this, you know, got married, started a family. We believe that was by design. Mm-hmm. Um, and we also believe that when the in, if you feel like the enemy is attacking you, which he is going to, um, that what we try to go back to is we just believe we have a big calling on our life. Mm-hmm. And he knows that, or how do I say that? That just helps us because we believe if we feel like we're getting attacked, it's because he knows we have a big calling. And if we didn't feel like we weren't getting attacked, then I feel like we're doing something wrong. Right. No, that's Um, good. It doesn't necessarily make it easier, Yeah, but it helps you, I guess, continue to press forward and have confidence to know that we're doing the right things to have faith because that's just the enemy trying to find a way to get us to give up, to lose belief, to get at each other, um, any way he can distract us from what ultimately God wants us to do while we're here. Absolutely. Oh, that's really good, Levi. Yeah. Yeah. So... um... We actually, so like Levi talked about when we were pursuing opening our gym and we were going to do it in Oregon, the things that fell through, like it's almost comical looking back because like the company that we were involved with, we had built to the top level in that company. So life was very comfortable for us. We were at home all day together. Didn't have a kid. Just we traveled a ton. Life was very comfortable and great. And so one of the things that was almost funny is we were going to put half the money down for our gym that we had, and then we were going to finance our equipment back. And we we couldn't get financing. And our financing kept falling through. And we're like, that makes absolutely no sense if you looked at our, you know, financials. So that was one thing we're like, what is going on here? And then we met with, we're like, okay, we got to the next step. We met with our landlord out there, sat down with him. We had the exact space we wanted, the lease we wanted. Everything was like on a silver platter. And we both just had a gut feeling of like this, something's off here. Mm -hmm. And so we didn't pursue it. And then moving here, you know, had Macy and then, um, re-pursued things. But the biggest defining moment, big thing that happened was with that company that we were with. We went into the bank here when we decided we were going to open one in Chesterfield. And we, like I said, we put down half the money. We got a loan for the other half and signed on the dotted line. And one week later, we lost that business that we had spent 
years building. That was our only income. That was everything. Wow. That company announced that they were essentially going to restructure things and we were gone. Wow. And everything was taken away overnight. And so we knew in that moment, well, one, you know, God had his hand on that, but two, like when we were going to open the gym, it was going to be, I'd always wanted my own gym. It was going to be a passion project. Of course we were still going to be present, but like, it was just going to be more. Yeah. The gym was supposed to be a investment. Okay. And for fun. And yeah. if the gym's not profitable, we have the cash flow to carry it. Yeah. It's going to be fun. We're going to make a difference in another area and there's some crossover there because it's mm-hmm. still on the health and wellness side of things. And so open sign on the dotted line and then One take that later, gone. income away. Wow. And now it's okay. The, pres- the pressure's on. So and this then- was here in Chesterfield. I mean, this was here in St. Louis area. Mm-hmm. Okay, you had signed for your space. Is it the space you guys are in? Yes, we had our wow. lease. We had okay, and that's that goes hand in hand with part of the dream I'll share. But we had our lease signed. We had signed, given all of our money to order our like everything. Yeah. We were the, we the were dotted all line in. with the bank. It was yeah. no turning back. Oh gosh! So we opened in December, okay. mid December. So it's three months, and then you shut down. That's what I'm saying. It's an additional pressure with COVID in that first year of trying to operate a business, and they have your hands tied the whole time because the initial plan of let's open this gym. It's going to be fun Yeah. to now there's all kinds of yeah. pressure because you have to make it work because yeah. you don't have a choice. Yeah. So we lost two big things really quickly, but wow. what, what's cool. And I know God gave me this dream back when he did for a reason. And I've held on to it since then, but it was the week before we had lost that business. So we had actually just signed on our gym put or put money down at the bank. Um, and like, it was a couple days after that, I had this dream and it was, God speaks to me through dreams, but this one was like very vivid. It woke me up yeah. and I woke up to God's voice essentially in my head saying, Mm -hmm. you exist to give people hope and to show them that I am enough. Mm -hmm. And in this dream, it is hands down the most vivid dream I've ever had in my life. We were in our building, our physical space before it was ours. Yeah. And it was totally empty on the inside. There was nothing. It was dark outside. It was totally empty. It was just me and Levi inside lights on. It was like glowing from the outside. So you wouldn't know that it was a gym, but it was our actual location where we were and we're inside and all these people are just coming from all different directions and they're coming into us and we're just loving on them and encouraging them. And like, we didn't know what was going on, but we, and we, we obviously had nothing to give. I know that that's why God was using a totally empty space to symbolize. We had nothing to give other than what was in our hearts. And we just kept saying, well, people like, how are you doing this? And like, we didn't, you know, exactly know what was going on, but we just kept saying we exist to you know, give people hope and show them that God is enough. Wow. And I woke up from that dream and I typed it down into my notepad and I was like, that was really weird. And then one week later we lost our business. We had nothing. And then we, you know, likely I talked about, we opened this gym, we go all in. I mean, when we opened, it was just us two. We were coaching every class from 5 a.m. until 6, 15 p.m. setting up. We had our daughter who is one. (laughs) We have no family out here. Um, We had like, it was crazy. And then, like you said, we're open for three months and then shut down. Wow. Control. So all of that tying in, but I've held on to that because I know that. Yeah. Well, one, we wouldn't be, we made it through by the grace of God. The fact that our doors were even able to reopen after all of that, we know it was a total God thing because we applied for every bit of COVID funding and stuff out there. We got nothing. We got no breaks from our landlord, from any, like we literally had every single expense do still the whole time we were shut down. We got nothing, um, but our members were amazing. And that was one of the coolest things. Like we had prayed over that space and the people that God would bring in our lives and yeah. through those doors. And the majority of our members paid their full membership the whole time we were shut down. That's and these amazing. are people who are, they've only known us a couple months, you know, Yeah, and they did that. And without that, we, we would not have been able to reopen hands down and people gifted memberships like to people in healthcare. Cause we were trying to do stuff online. Yeah. Um, the generosity, like that, that affirmed our belief so much in what we were doing because we mm-hmm. felt called to open a gym, the space that worked out, everything about it was a God thing Yeah, and the timing of it. And we knew we just felt so strongly. We're meant to be here. We're meant to make a difference here right now. And that was an affirmation of 
God's saying, this is a hundred percent me. You know, the only reason that mm-hmm. you're still standing is because I'm providing for you because we obviously had nothing like, yeah. Yeah. from anything. Um, and to be open and to make it through all of that was really, it encourages your faith and yeah. it makes us want to give more, do more, just keep chasing the things that he has for us because we know that he's going to provide and he's going to show up even yeah. when it's not. So Levi, take me back to that moment when, you know, you said you guys started the gym in December and then it's March, a <laughs> couple weeks in. I mean, I know you guys said ultimately, you know, your faith has been built through that, but what was really going on in your mind when it's like, we're having to shut down your, I mean, cause you guys know, I mean, you talked about financial part, the first what, six months, I mean, of a few months of a business is really huge because you're having to recoup the cost. I mean, just all the things that you've invested, not only having to pay people, pay all the things. So you are brand new. What, what were you thinking? I mean, did you guys, did you think you're going to be able to make it? What, what, what was going on? Uh, honestly, it's a cool thing about life. Yeah. Uh, through hard times is as time goes on, you kind of forget yeah. some of that. Yeah. Um, to be honest, uh, I know that the the one thing for me, when you're in business with your spouse, um, <laughs> there's great things about that. Yeah. But then when things are not great, then you take it out on each other. Yeah. So I can tell you just in our marriage, that was a stressful season in our marriage. I bet. Yeah. Uh, that was not fun. Um, I, I guess I could say I, I'm... You know, would I choose to walk through that again? Yeah, but I don't know if I'd like to walk through that again um, because that's not fun. Um, Yeah. You know, and and that was a good lesson, too, of priorities. What's most important here, you know, God, family, yeah, then everything else. Um, Because when your family's not right, it doesn't really matter what you're doing. Um, Yeah. You know, when when inside your four walls is not what it should be, um, it affects everything. Yeah. And so yeah. we got, you know, we got to walk through that. Now that we're on the other side, I'm grateful for it because mm-hmm. I'm sure, you know, the enemy is going to throw things at us in our marriage in the future. Uh, but I feel like we learned a lot walking mm-hmm. through that. Um, again, growing in our faith. Yeah. Uh, cause at the end of the day, that's all you can do. Um, I mean, I don't know how far you want to dive into that, but yeah, for me, it was a lot of lessons, you know, just who can, who's going to meet your needs. You know, we expect our spouse to meet our needs, but your spouse isn't there to always meet your needs. You know, there's only one person or thing, God, that can actually meet all your needs. And so for me, that was a good season in that aspect of realizing that I don't need Chelsea for, Hmm. in a good way. Yeah. She cannot meet all of my needs all the time. We're leading up to that season. I feel like I was... I didn't understand that. Right. You know, you, you, there was an expectation put on her, like an unrealistic expectations that she's never going to be able to live up to. Um, so again, that's a, on the other side, there's another blessing that God's using that where you feel like everything might be crumbling down around you. Um, and, you know, diamonds are forged under pressure. And uh, our marriage has grown because of that stressful time. Um, so that... For me, I would say looking back, that was the biggest piece for me. It wasn't necessarily the business related, but more so marriage related yeah. and just in our personal lives of what we had to walk through and in the growth that took place during that time. Mm-hmm. That's good. Chelsea, do you have anything to add from the marriage? I mean, that is huge. Like I said, running businesses, yeah. you guys are doing it all together all the time. There's no separation, which yeah. I'm sure is plus and my, you know, yeah. good and bad. And I also have to preface that by saying, by no means do, do we have it figured out. No. No. And we got <laughs> no, in a no, little no. thing today even. Um, yeah. It happens. <laughs> uh, when we got to the gym. So it's like, I always, I don't ever want to feel like I'm standing up here and speaking down to other people, acting like we got it figured out because we sure don't. But we can always come back to God's at the center of our marriage. And we know we can always come back to that, yeah. which mm-hmm. is important. Yeah. Yeah, that for sure. Yeah. I mean, we've, we've grown a lot and that's why I joked at the beginning and said we had about a good six months together (laughs) and then life got really interesting really quick. Mm -hmm. Um, but through all of that too, like I said, of course, growing together in our faith and in our marriage, but like prioritizing, like we have so many things that we want to do, things that we feel like God has laid on our heart mm-hmm. and big things that we want to pursue and chase and all of that. But at the end of the day, it's like we know we're not always good at doing it, but we know that when we just 
pursue our marriage first, mm. God and our marriage first, he's going to take care of all of the other things yeah. that we want to do. And for, I mean, honestly, we say we were in survival mode because we were, because we weren't even together for a full year before we lost our main business. And then it's like, okay, well, we're both workhorses by nature, so we're going to grind it out and do what we have to do. Yeah. And then our gym opened and we, you know, we're grinding it out and we neglected each other. I mean, praise and God moved for... moved three times and in a year and a half. three times. Yeah, yeah, that's a lot. Other and a new baby. <laughs> but again, it's cool. Like with the moving, we, the house that we were renting, whenever we first moved to Chesterfield, um, the owner sold it out from underneath us during COVID. Oh gosh. So during you, All of that and the shutdown, this house that we were renting and planning on being in for two years got sold out from underneath us, which is wow. how we ended up in O'Fallon and how we <laughs> crossed the river and came to the church. And that's the full circle that's, connection because we lived right down the road. See, so I, that's crazy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But um, we, well, we view everything with a different lens now. I know God walked us through that because to be on the mountaintop and having a total life of total freedom to go back into the valley together. One, we know what we're capable of, but two, when you have things again or in a different way, you treat them totally yeah. different. Yeah. And just with our marriage and what we need to prioritize, like our biggest goal for next year is to take a vacation together. That's all. Aw- <laughs> yeah. Like to do that's great. And things that are not mm-hmm. focused around work and to focus on our marriage and each other because we know, like I said, yeah. when that's firing on all cylinders, God's going to provide and take care of the rest. And yeah. we can operate from a place of more peace and rest as opposed yes. to the grind of every single day on the work and giving all that our focus and then to each other. Yeah. And we, we know that, but it's still hard for us to, Absolutely. we have Absolutely. No. But. We'll wrestle that out a little bit with me because we actually, our first few episodes we've been talking about, we're talking a lot about rest and just what do you do when you're tired? We've, everybody in the whole world has made it through a pandemic that mm-hmm. tries to end and is not, I mean, wherever we're at in it. Um, and that has taken a toll on everybody in different ways. And like I said, as you guys being business owners, of course, it's not just your family, it's your business, your livelihood, all of this. Um, but how are you guys practically right now trying to recoup and, and rest? And you're, you haven't mentioned yet, Chelsea, but you're about ready to have, you guys are going to add another baby to your family, like mm-hmm. any, any day in a few weeks here soon. But how are you guys kind of, how is that flushing out right now in this season to still find moments of um, faith and family and all that while running a business? Mm-hmm. Do you want to go? <laughs> oh, I'll just say it sounds easy, um, <laughs> but never is. There's definitely, you know, I try to look at it. Things happen in seasons, mm-hmm. you know, you'll have certain obstacles or, a more difficult stretch. And I just, I look at that as that's a season. I just got to get through this season. Yeah. And then the next season, I'll take that on when we get there. And so, um, I just lost my train I'm of thought. I'm laughing because we we say that we're fine. We're at a season right now where, you know, things are a little easier, but we joke for our first two and a half years of marriage was a whole season. We never got a little break on that right. one. But yeah. You're so right. I guess I'm saying I we're not good at resting, honestly. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and we're getting better, but mm-hmm. we're not good at making time mm-hmm. for each other. Yeah. Um, one, because, you know, last year didn't always allow for it. Uh, but then also, like Chelsea said, you feel like you're called to do lots of things. Um, and we do want to make an impact while you're here and you can't sit at home on your butt yeah. if you want to make a difference in Absolutely. this world you got to be up doing things and so um you know I, yeah, yeah that's all I got there. well and we're just learning too, like to be more intentional with our time mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. like i said we are so far from arriving at this <laughs> but like prioritizing at night like okay you know, we're, we've been we've been a lot better about going out for date nights, Good. going out to dinner, yeah. doing things that we didn't do because we one we're like, well, we're going to save money and we're not going to go out to eat. Like all the things where it's like, okay, but no, you you need to do something yeah. together. And then, like I said, we are workers by nature, so at night it's easier for us to keep doing things and not yeah. unplug or. We go on a date night and we talk about work all the time. <laughs> you know, like little things that we're 
intentionally getting better at of prioritizing family time or date nights or things like that where we are not talking about yeah work yeah. or our kids down, or yeah. not taking the phone to dinner <laughs> yeah, yeah things like that where we're just um we know that like i said whenever we can be intentional with each other in our marriage and of course you know having a church home that makes yeah. a big difference too and being able to step into we know we have a ministry calling on our lives even though we don't know exactly mm-hmm. what that may look like le- yet but yeah. just being willing to or intentional in those situations where we know that god's going to continue to reveal yeah. more and more and when we're looking outward more so and mm-hmm. focused on not just our X's and O's of the days, but who God's put in our life and who we're yeah. supposed to speak to and looking at those opportunities, he's going to continue to reveal yeah. more. And more. Yeah. So. I, I think it's hard when you're um, balanced. They say, right, like you're always trying to have work-life balance, or but balance is a myth. Mm-hmm. And the hard part is I think when it's not hard, it's actually amazing. When you are passionate about things, like you said, now your passions just are colliding with what you also do to make a living. And so it's hard. I mean, I would say that a lot about my job. I said, it's a job, but I love what I do. It doesn't feel like it's work. And so I think Chelsea, your word of intentional is just probably the best thing to look at it. So for anybody listening to, it's just, man, what, what can I bring some more intentionality to whatever I'm doing? I mean, if you guys also really, I don't personally fully understand this, but I, you guys enjoy, you love working out. I mean, mm-hmm. partly that's probably restful, right? Getting to do some of the things that you get to do and be at the gym. Um, that's, and so you're probably intersecting more and having more of those times. And mm-hmm. I love that. Um, talk about Macy just a little bit. I hope it's okay. Is it okay? I said her name. Sorry. I just like all of a sudden I just said her name on the, hopefully it's okay. Um, but I see your videos. Like she's at the gym with you guys all the time. Like talk just a little bit how you do family like that. She's with you and. Well, one thing piggybacking off what you said too, like we opened a gym to make a difference in people's lives and yeah. like we I mean, now we needed to, but at the time we didn't need to. We just felt called to do that. But for us, like our gym, we're so passionate about health and fitness in general, but that's our our ministry. And we know in this season, we're called to open more gyms and to do that because that's our ministry in a way for us to reach people, love people, encourage people in a way that we're so passionate about. And so with our gym and why we opened with just us two and you know, going all in on it is because we wanted to make a difference in people's lives and um, ultimately, you know, lead them to Jesus. And Mm -hmm. we know that we have a unique way of connecting with people where they're going to come in and we've prayed that over our space so much where Mm -hmm. they're going to come in for great workouts and all that, but they're going to leave knowing that something's different about that place and about those people. And we're very intentional about who we, what trainers we hire and what their hearts are like, because we are so protective over that. Yeah. If that makes sense. Um, so we've always wanted it to be an extension of God's love, whether people are know it or not, when they come in there, they just know. Um, and hopefully, you know, the more they get to know us, we have a ton of members that come to church with us or that come over for Bible study now that, you know, things like that. But, um, from the beginning, even with Macy, I mean, she was one, a little over one when we opened, but it's always just been our family and we've wanted to create that family feel and you, you get what you get. Like we joke because everyone in there, like, really they know us they know what we walk through we're open books about yeah everything um so it's cool the relationships that we built with people we call it our f45 family and we mean that because i mean these people have walked through yeah a lot of really hard times with us but the way that they love macy too like she's been around since the beginning and it'll be cool because Leighton, our baby boy that's due soon um We'll get to be with everyone from literally the beginning of his life, yeah. which is really special because she's loved on and encouraged and like people love her yeah, because she's around just as much. Um, it's just really special. Like it truly is a family feel and we love that. I love that you say that. I want you to talk about it a little bit more because um, I was going to ask about that, Chelsea. So from an outsider looking in, I, I can feel and sense that from everything that you guys post that this is more than just like... Obviously, it's more than just a job for you guys, but even the people coming in, how they have rallied around you guys. And I think that would have happened COVID or not. Mm -hmm. I think it's a big part about how you guys are just building that and doing that. And I think it's your dream, Chelsea, like you said, that this people would come here and they would know and they'd find the hope of Jesus in there. Are there there some things that you do intentionally to try to help make it feel that way or talk a little more? Because it really, like I said, from the outside looking in, you can tell you guys are so good about just... They are your family because you don't even have family 
here, like you said, right? Yeah. Do you sure? I feel like I could go, <laughs> I could talk a lot about all of that. Um, it's definitely with in, intentionality. Yeah. But I think it goes back to what's in your heart. Mm. And, you know, again, uh, we'll always say we have not arrived or we we don't hopefully don't come across as coming from a place of we're better than, yeah. uh, but trying to view people as equal that you're not better than somebody else. Doesn't matter what kind of car people pull up in, what kind of house they have, what clothes they're wearing, um, what kind of job, you know, just where they live. Just if you look at people as equal or better than you and how you treat them every day when they walk in, do they feel noticed? Um, are they encouraged? Do they know that you care for them, that, you know, that you love them? Um, I think that is a big part of it. And I mean, that just leads into, I could just say about, you know, as Nick said, you know, probably a month ago, you know, what is our calling? Well, that's to know Jesus and to make Jesus known. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I was just thinking about, so building trust and, or sorry, building influence, influence comes once you've built a relationship and you've built trust with somebody, then mm. you can have influence over them. Um, and there's just, I feel like sometimes you may set out, people might graduate high school or college and they think they need to do this. And then God takes them on this side road over here yeah. where they're like, I don't even know how I got over here or what I'm doing here. And, you know, looking back for me, and again, this could, we could talk the rest of the day, but you know, I, I grew up, I guess you'd call me, you know, the Christer, the Christmas Easter yeah. Christian. Um, but then I went to college and like a lot of kids, you know, you watch other people and, you know, my mom's mom, you know, got killed. My mom's mom and two of, two of her sisters got killed by a drunk driver when my mom oh, was 17. Wow. My mom was the oldest. And I just know how much that's impacted her and my aunts yeah. and everything. And just the kinds of questions that I had that I felt like nobody could answer. And like she said, I'm very, I guess you could say analytical, like a, you know, this plus this equals this. Somebody explain it to me. And um, that and watching people who were people of faith, yeah, quote unquote, yeah drinking and partying and this and that and doing all these bad things. And here I am not getting in any trouble or trying mm. to, you know, do what I believe is right. And so I spent a five year period of my life. I don't know exactly what it was not believing. Yeah. And I, you know, now looking back, it's like, man, how much arrogance did you have at that point to not just to say it, but then to feel like you had an explanation of why you didn't believe and nobody could debunk my whatever. Right. <laughs> and so I, that used to actually cause me to not have confidence to share my faith because I felt like a hypocrite. Um, but then I realized like, that's just part of my story. And I've now learned there's plenty of people that I've gotten to talk to who are in that same spot that I was in yeah. and to let them know that it's okay to admit that I didn't understand or I didn't believe, but now I do. And it's okay to have that story. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, Will, you want to open the, <laughs> we can pot. you actually, got, I think, did they knock on the door? Oh, you can kid? come in. Is that our kid? I don't know. Yeah. You I said I want, Oh, you're fine. Sorry. When are you starting? Yeah, whatever. I'm I was going to say, I have more to, go to ahead, share, yeah, but go just, ahead. Well, I was just going to say, um, leave it. What, what was the turning point for you in the whole faith thing that made it that you were like, okay, this is real. I believe this. <laughs> Well, I, I, the, for me, I, there was not an actual, I didn't have one of those defining moments yeah, that, where yeah. I saw the light. You know? <laughs> um, I feel like for me, it, it, part of it was getting around people, um, people that I, I guess you could say admired, but people that lived life differently. Mm. And that's going to tie back to what I was saying. So remind me of that. Um, <laughs> that's why I started the whole thing. Uh, live life differently, had uh, an abundant life in many aspects. Um, at that time, I didn't see the spiritual abundance that they had, but I saw the financial abundance, mm -hmm. the influence that they had, their marriages, yeah. just all of that. Looking at people, getting around people like that and being like, "What well, they are different. I can mm -hmm. just see it and yeah. feel it, the way they talk to you. And so getting in, put in a position to be around those people to where you start to lean in and then over time you get to a place where, you know, and then again, you have 
pride, you know, not pride, but you know, you're embarrassed. Like you have to walk through that journey of getting over the fact of it's actually okay for you to move past where you yeah. were and be okay with that. So, uh, for me, that was, it was being around believers mm-hmm. who didn't preach it, but lived it. Yeah. And for me, that is what for us in the gym of what we try to embody. It's not about what, cause people don't, care what you say they yeah. care what you do like yeah. your actions are always going to speak louder than your words and so for us you know I, and again this isn't to somebody that wants to stand on the corner and, and preach the gospel um but i just have to believe more people are going to be brought to know jesus through a friend or someone that they trust who has influence on them and it's not about what they say but it's how they live their life yeah absolutely. and it's how they feel treated by that person or how they see that person treat others yeah maybe when people say negative things about them but they choose to love them anyways and they don't mm-hmm. talk bad about them just things like that that make you different mm-hmm. and i think that is where we are aware of that mm-hmm. are we perfect in that not even close but we're aware of it and we talk about it. We think about it often because, and I feel like that helps us in that gym or in that setting of how are we treating people mm-hmm. and do they, do they feel that there's something different about these people? They, yeah. they, they love everybody. Um, I, I feel like I could call them and say, I need you to come help me. And they would, mm-hmm. they would be right there to help me. And so, yeah. um, I think for, for me, that's how I've always viewed that, that, I think if you're trying to walk that out and not talk about it, but be about it, I guess I'd say, but walk that out every day. And again, not perfect in that, but Mm -hmm. when you're conscious of that, I think you treat people, actually, I know you treat people different. Yeah. And, um, you know, we always say we want people to look forward to coming into our gym because that's going to be the best part of their day because of how they feel when they're in there. Because whether it's at their work, maybe their, their home life, whatever it is, Mm -hmm. you never know what's going on. And we want people to look forward to, to being there, not just so that they're a member for a long time, because everybody knows if you run a business, you got to make money or you're not going to have a business. Um, but just making the impact on that person is, is that the best part of their day? Um, yeah, we know what our mission is and why we opened it. And that's always in the forefront of our mind. And like I said, just loving and treating people like that first, it's cool because obviously people are coming in to work out. We're not preaching sermons at them. Right. It's 45 minutes in and out, but they know that there's something different about us and, Hmm. and any opportunity outside of that and, Conversations. I mean, we're outspoken on our social media as well, and just you know what we believe and things like that, and people can see that and pick up on that. Yeah. Um, but it has been really cool and really rewarding because over time, that influence, that trust that we built with people as they come to us about certain things, being able to speak into their lives and share Jesus, and just um, even have people asking like, "How come? How come you guys are so nice all the time? How come <laughs> this place feels different?" Well, and they like, probably say that about Chelsea. They probably don't say. <laughs> I don't say I'm so nice no. all the time. No, but those simple questions of, yeah, you know, people who haven't been in an environment or been like s- truly selflessly loved with no expectation mm. before and asking why, like, why are you nice? Why are you doing certain things for me or whatever? And we're able to share Jesus and we've been able to lead a lot of people to Jesus through that, which is the I end goal that. without yeah. having to, you know, so it's. And or just yeah. encouraging other believers on their journey through life where yeah. it's easy to get frustrated or down and just to be there to encourage people, yeah. I think is very important. I love um, that. But yeah, I just wanted to add one thing on what I said earlier, just yeah. down that where you never know what God's doing when you, you know, I set out, got a master's in teaching, then you end up going down a different road. <laughs> you get around people that then lead me back to uh, Jesus. But also building influence. We, mm. you know, once you're once you've given your life to Christ, and you know that your that's your ultimate goal is to share the good news and to bring people to Jesus. Uh, that takes influence, and that's yeah. what I was getting at. So for us, the gym is another way that we just get to meet so many people. We don't have an ulterior motive, yeah, but to meet people, to build trust, to build influence. Because again, you go back to that person standing on the corner mm-hmm. with the loudspeaker. Yeah. Versus, 
you're in people's everyday life and the more people you get to be around and be there for and build trust, you build some influence in that. And mm-hmm. through that, I just feel like that ultimately for us, at the end of the day, that's going to allow us or God's going to use us to make even a bigger impact through that. And so that's one thing I've learned from the previous business to the gym and, and just all that time and sacrifice spent building relationships and spending time with people, building influence ultimately is going to allow you to do the, the things yeah. that you want. Mm-hmm. I love that building influence. Such a good, good reminder. Mm -hmm. Guys, the time goes really fast. So we're already, (laughs) we've been in a little bit. So I want to ask you guys, is, is there anything else like in your store, any other things you guys want to tell? And then I've, I've got two questions to kind of end. We got, we got 10, at least 10 minutes. Okay. You good. Okay. Well then we'll we'll fill in the 10 minutes. I'll share just very quickly because it's I, what makes us unique, I think, as a couple and everything that we're pursuing, like we're pursuing opening more gyms. That's what we've yeah. been called to do in this season right now. And again, with influence, like we know that God has entrusted us with a lot. And the more mm-hmm. that we steward it, he's going to keep bringing people and opening doors and allowing that. Yeah. Um, but Levi and I are also raised very differently, Okay, yeah. which is cool and offers unique perspective. I was born and raised in the church Okay, and a family of a bunch of believers, like incredible from my parents to my grandparents, just like was always raised yeah. that way. So we were raised very differently. And whenever we were first together too, like Levi felt even more so unqualified because he just felt like, oh, I'm so much farther along and I just know so much more. And like, it's cool to see, which obviously isn't the case, but how God has grown him and us together through all of this where like, sometimes I'm like, wow, like he is a lot wiser than me in a lot of things and just like, you know, through all of it. But yeah. even in just talking to people and through our, I'll say ministry, mm-hmm. um, he walked through what he walked through because he can relate to so many people in ways that yeah. I very, like cannot relate at all. And so it's almost makes his testimony even more powerful because he has been in the trenches yeah. that I have not yeah. walked through. Um, so we know too. And just, sorry, I keep saying ministry, whatever that is, but like our stories and everything, the way, you know, God has raised both of us is different for a powerful reason when we we truly feel like we can minister to people of all walks Mm -hmm. through both of us. So, yeah. I love that. I love, he uses, God uses every part of our story. And if they were all the same, then (laughs) be pretty boring. And so he can use all of that. Um, so I want to ask this, I want to ask each of you to just give a little encouragement. We've been kind of all over the place. And like I said, I know we could talk for hours cause I really have a lot mm-hmm. more questions. We'll just have to have you back again and share more. Um, but what encouragement would you give to people listening, whether they're, they're struggling with, um, I'm not sure if I want to try this thing. It seems scary and I'm afraid to put it all out. You said, you know, you guys try to live with, Hey, we're just, we're trusting God and we're going to put it all out on the line to follow him. Um, what would you say? to somebody struggling with that or just in general, like, I'm not sure what I'm supposed to be doing. Just give, give some general encouragement to people listening some more. You've already been very encouraging, but what else would you say? Do you want to go first or do you want me? Uh, well, well, first I would say, um, don't jump off a cliff because even if you think you have wings, you don't. Um, <laughs> I would say go for yeah, it. <laughs> so, <laughs> you ha- they have, to, they have love- to line a few things up. It's got to make a little bit of sense. Yeah, absolutely. Because we do live in this place, place love- called Earth where things have to work. Um, <laughs> so I, I would say that's also, there's a good balance there because we're she will say things and I'm, then I'm Find like, a parachute okay, on the way down. I love we, it. We, yeah. do, we do live in this real, let's talk some real life stuff here. Things. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I would say when, when you're really looking at that about what you, what you just said, I feel like Chelsea could do a better job of sharing that because I feel like for me on a lot of that stuff, after we've talked about it, it's more so I've got to trust you. Like I trust yeah. you. And if you believe God's speaking to you and that we need to do this and we've talked about it and I feel like it makes sense. Um, even though sometimes it does feel like we're just throwing caution to the wind, <laughs> I have trust in her. And, and so I'm buying that. Yeah. yeah. Well, I just, well, I mean, when you trust Jesus and you know that he has a plan for your life, like I have always this again, where we're different, but like we are all born with something inside of us mm-hmm. that is why we're here. Yes. And so I am big on like, 
the passions, the sparks, the little things that you feel, even if it starts little, but something that keeps coming up and you know that you need to do it, being willing to go all in and go for it. And like, God's going to show up and he's big enough to redirect you. And I think that's part of why I operate a little more fearlessly in that because he is big enough to, okay, if I'm getting way too far down this (laughs) wrong way, he's going to shut doors. And we've seen that we've had doors slammed in our face. We've had things that, you know, obviously haven't worked out where it's, it's a redirection, but it's the being willing to keep going. And I just love the quote. That's what's true on the mountaintops Mm -hmm. is still true in the valleys. And we've held on to that because we know that even though we don't know what it all looks like, we have, we know in this season what we're called to do. And we know, again, just being willing to let go, but trusting that like, okay, God, you are, you are sending us out to do this. We are here for a mission. We are here for a reason. Yeah. And you know, he can do everything, but you have to be willing to take the steps and you have to be willing to get burned and you have to be willing to take the gut punches and just knowing that like, just because you get knocked down and just because doors close doesn't mean Mm -hmm. that it's a no or that things aren't going to work out. But, um, we've just had a lot of faith in that and to continue to just take the steps and whatever that looks like and just to know and trust like and we've had prophetic words spoken over our Mm. lives too that we hang on to where it's like okay well god you said this and you spoke this and we know that this is truth yeah and even when things don't look good we are holding on to this because you said it yeah and even if it's not going to come to pass for 50 years or whatever it is we know that your word is true and we hang on to that so trusting whether it's that or just like the promises of god in the bible and what he has over your life like yeah He's there and he's going to see things through and um, you can just operate from a place of a lot more fearlessness and being willing to go. So I would say just adding to that, um, is your heart in the right place? Mm -hmm. And is that truly what God's calling you to do? Or does that sound good to you as a human being who we tend to be greedy? Yeah. Uh, It's easy to be driven by money. Um, Money's not bad. It takes money to make a difference. Uh, we want to make as much money as we can because the more money you have, the bigger difference you can make with that money. We understand that. Um, but is your heart in the right place? Is that really what you feel like God's calling you to do? Or does that sound really good because <laughs> something of your own desire, mm-hmm. not maybe not God's, and you're yeah. trying to make it God's? So yeah. I feel like that's the one thing is praying about and asking yourself, like, where's my heart in this? Is mm-hmm. this really, am I really being called to this? Because from my experience, when you're really, when God's calling you to something, there's always going to be sacrifice, almost always going to be sacrifice yep. involved in that. Yep. And as a human being, we don't like that very much. No, so. we don't. <laughs> Levi, the, guys, so good. So you've already shared so many incredible things. I hope everybody listening, either you might need to come back and take some notes because you guys have said so many great things. Um, but the last question we always ask is because the show is called Now That's Something Good, mm-hmm. you've already shared a lot of good things, but is there any other good thing I would say? Like there's no qualifier. It could be a story. It could be a product. It could be a favorite workout. I don't like whatever, whatever you want to share that's something good in each of your lives right now that's been bringing you a little goodness that you want to pass along. You want to go first? Leah doesn't know anything good. No. Um, Okay, well, our baby, obviously, having our baby boy, that's been really sweet. And um, I think even more special for me, like we talked about, we moved four times in three years. We've rented it. We've never had a home to call our own. We finally just built a house, and we are not going anywhere anytime soon. Um, But one thing that's been really sweet for me, especially, is like with Macy, our daughter, I never got to do a room for her how I wanted to because we were always renting and then yeah. moving and you know and that was always I mean guys can't totally understand but for me that was like <laughs> upsetting you want to nest you want to yes. give them a room and like you know all the special yeah. things and I was never able to do that and so it's cool um in this season and really sweet getting to do double and getting to do her room how we want and to love do it his room and to be settled into a home mm. <laughs> for a while with um, two kids and just to kind of have double in the season with that when being, I mean, we want to do a lot, but at the end of the day, from the time I was little, if you asked you, what I be what I wanted to be when I grew up? I would always say a mom because that's all I've ever wanted to be. Yeah. Um, and so that's for me really sweet in this season. So. I love it. I love it. Levi, did you think of something or I just want to piggyback on? That's fine. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I was going to make some COVID jokes, but I better just refrain. <laughs> you- <laughs> I better refrain from, from the going, COVID jokes. Going, that down, was your internet, yeah. going down that rabbit hole. 
Um, do you like? Are you a joke person, Levi? Do you I like guess. jokes? Yeah. Do you have a jo- any other joke that maybe? Hey, is- <laughs> we grew up different. Most of my jokes are not. Uh, they're ranch jokes that you can't. <laughs> they're not. We have to work on that real quick. <laughs> I mean, we're a family friendly podcast, but also yeah. we can. <laughs> yeah, no. Now that now I just get made fun of by the young the girls that coach for us and people that <laughs> Levi and his dad jokes, and I'm like, well, you took all my good jokes away from me. Now I got you these. Took- now, now I got these these dad jokes. So I guess I'll wear that. So, um, that's something good. I'm we're just grateful um, mm-hmm. to be where we're at right now, and yeah. just to know that we're loved, and um, you know all the things that Jesus did for us on the cross, mm-hmm. and that no matter what's happening here, eventually we're not going to be here anymore, and we know where we're going, yeah. and just um, also excited just to raise our kids mm-hmm. to know and love Jesus, you know, like growing up, that was never, you know, that wasn't a thought for me. Yeah. I didn't think about those things. And now to, uh, to be there, just excited about that, to walk through that journey with our kids and just, again, knowing we're, we're not going to be perfect parents, but to be intentional about, you know, our kids' core beliefs and who Mm -hmm. are they and just all those kinds of things. It's just, we're grateful for where we're at right now. We believe that our mission too, like we have a lot we want to do, but at the end of the day, our kids... We our hope and prayer is that they we're building the life that we're building and we're hustling and we're sacrificing because we believe in them so much, born and unborn. Yeah, that they're going to take the torch and they're going to run way farther than we ever could. And yep. we just hope our life is just like a launching pad for them to go do that. Yeah, and take it even farther. So absolutely, definitely something good, awesome. Well, thank you guys so much for coming and sharing your story today. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Levi and Chelsea shared so many incredible things with us. Something that we talk about often here on the podcast is that God might just be leading you to do something. And I love what Chelsea and Levi talked about influence. And we all have influence in some way, shape, or form. Maybe it's just in your home. Maybe it's in your place of work. Maybe it's in a ministry you do. Maybe it's with the kids you teach. I don't know. Whatever it is, you have a sphere of influence and people are looking to you and watching you and seeing what what you are doing. And I love what Chelsea and Levi had to say about just how influence helps build relationships. It doesn't have to be this big flashy thing of talking all about Jesus, but just living a life sold out to him can be such an example to people around you. So I want to encourage you this week, what is something you can do in your sphere of influence to help point people to something good? You know, we're all about good news and good stories here um, at Now That's Something Good. There's a lot of moments that we we might miss every so often if we don't have our eyes open to it. And so it's our hope that this week, as you're living your day-to-day ordinary life, that God's going to show up big in extraordinary ways and that you're going to get to see good things and share good things wherever you go. Have a great week and we'll see you back here next week for a new episode of Now That's Something Good.